know, if you're not feeling well, we understand. If you had a bad week, we understand. But you are in the presence of the Lord. Maybe something happened before you came. Maybe somebody offended you by the door. Maybe somebody didn't greet you this morning. But I want to say to you this morning, let it go. Say, say, some, say to, next, to somebody next to you, let it go. And that's my title of my message this morning. <laughs> let it go. Because our body language speaks volumes. And you can see when people are in a mood. Maybe you didn't have your coffee this morning. Or maybe you didn't have your breakfast this morning, your bacon and sausage and eggs this morning. But our body language speaks volumes. And you, when somebody says, I will never use the word I'm fine again, the ladies will understand what we're talking about. <clears throat> right? But when people say I'm fine, there's so much behind that I'm fine. So ask the person next to you, how are you doing? And answer the question back. Some of them just looking at you and they're smiling for you to understand what they're saying. <laughs> okay? So I, I just sensed this morning when Pastor Ash told me a few weeks ago that this word, let it go. Because a lot of us are holding on to so much, but we have not let go the problems and the situations that we faced over a long time. So letting go is giving up what is beyond our control. You and I want that so desperately to let it go, but it can be hard to let go when you don't know what that means. Letting go is giving up what is beyond your control and to embrace what we can change. So I know, ladies, you don't like to let go. I know it's Women's Month, but you hold on to a lot. And there is a good reason for that as well. But some of you can hold a grudge for a long time. Some of you probably had a small argument with your husband and it's been a week and you haven't made his coffee in the morning. People are laughing. So maybe, yes, that's right. But in Isaiah 43, from 18 to 19, here the prophet is speaking to the people of Israel and he says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Say new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a road in the wilderness, in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Yeah, the, the, book, of, uh, the book of Isaiah is one of the major prophets um, in the Old Testament. This particular message is a message that the prophet Isaiah had to give to the Israelites that God wanted them to hear. A message of hope and encouragement. So the Israelites, just to your background, had a history of rebellion against God. And as a result, they were experiencing the consequences of their disobedience in the form of captivity. So they were under captivity at the time. And through, God spoke to the prophet Isaiah, says, telling the people to forget the past and look forward towards the future with hope and expectation. Because they were so focused or they were so immune to being in captivity that they didn't realize there is a hope and a future. We're probably in that situation like the people of Israel in exile or under a lot of stress at the moment. And because we are so clouded by that, we forget that there's hope, that there's joy, that there's peace, that you can smile again. So look at somebody and just smile at them. Some of them don't want to smile. But the first part of the message is, remember not the former things, neither consider the old, the things of old, the Lord encourages the Israelites to let go of the past and not to dwell on the pre previous experiences of hardships. This verse also serves as a reminder, if God is for us, no man can be against us. Amen? The people of Israel, Israel held so tightly to the past that they, that they missed the new things that God wanted to show them. And that's some of us right now. We're holding on to the past. But God has brand new things in store for us. But it's clouding our vision because there's so many things that we're going through and we'd rather go through that and feel the pain and feel the hurt. But God has new things. Say new things. How many of you want a new house? How many of you want a new car? How many of you want a new salary? 
Only a few people. Okay, a sign. All right, Lord. Just the people that said yes, bless them this morning. The people of Israel held so tightly. We're holding on. But we need to let go. God speaks in the same way, warning us about that we can't control the past, but we can focus on the miracles around us today. There are little bit or little miracles that are taking place in our lives, and we don't even say thank you to God. It's just the mere fact of us getting up this morning is a miracle. It's just the mere fact of you that have your hands and your feet and you can see is a miracle. It's just the little things that you had a plate of food last day is a miracle. We can't control negative people. But we can choose joy. How many of you remember the Choose Joy series that Pastor Ash spoke about? But we can choose joy for ourselves. Letting go isn't, isn't easy in the beginning because holding on is our natural response. It's natural for us to hold on to things. It's a natural thing to hold on to the past and to the hurt that we, have, that we face. But there's much hope. Just as the prophet Isaiah describes, new roads in the desert and rivers in the wilderness. As we give up what we can't control to embrace what we can change, new ways of thinking, new relationships. We cannot experience the new things because we are holding on to the past. We are holding on to things that happened a long time ago. We're stuck in the circle and we don't realize that God has so much in store for us. It's this behavior, the cyclical behavior of and repeating the same behavioral patterns over and over and over again, counseling after counseling, prayer after prayer, but God has so much in store for us. The second part of the message is, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it or can you not see it? This passage emphasizes the promise of God to bring about a new and unexpected change in the lives of the Israelites. This verse serves as a source of hope and comfort, assuring the people that God is in control and will bring a positive transformation. In their circumstance. Positive transformation. Amen. It also speaks to the faithfulness and consistency of God's love. No matter what we go through, do you know God still loves us? And he still cares for us? Tell somebody next to you, he still cares. Here the Lord encourages his people to let go of the old and embrace the new. You know when you Make a change in the home and you turn your couch, maybe it was facing this way, now you change and you face this way. You feel uncomfortable, like you're not sitting in your lounge. How, how many of you have experienced that? Or when you first get a new car, you were so used of the old car that it's taking you time to get used of your new car. Now it has more power. The pro probably the other one doesn't have that much power. Amen? So yeah, the Lord encourages people to let go. Say let go. Say, let it go. Turn around to somebody and say, let it go. The third part of the message is, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the de desert is symbolic of God's ability to provide for his people even in the most desolate and challenging so situations. Do you ever ask yourself, how did I ever make it to August? We're in August. We're 20 weeks away from Christmas. Yo, 20 weeks away from Christmas. Some of you know your mind is running. This imagery of creating a new way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert speaks to God's power to bring about abundance and prosperity in the midst, in the midst of scarcity and hardship. It is a reminder that God is capable of doing the impossible and transforming seamlessly ho hopeless situations around Probably your situation right now is, feels hopeless. It probably feels that it's never going to change. But it's up to us to let go of what's holding us back. Point, take your finger and point it to yourself. Say, I need to let it go. Psalms 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalms 55 22 in the NLT says, Give your burdens to the Lord. Who you must give it to? Give your burdens to what it says. The, not your husband, 
Not your wife, not your boss, not your neighbor, but to the Lord. And he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Now when this word, let it go, and it, it, it just made me feel like a lot of us are holding on to things and it's weighing us down. So what are the things that we need to let go? See, Israel, they were stuck in this situation, in captivity. But God wanted to take them out of captivity and into a promised land, into blessing. But sometimes when we're in the circle of going through turmoil and torment, we feel that there's no way out. If you look at a circle, if you look at your ring, it's just a circle. There's no way out. And sometimes we find, we feel, we find that we're just stuck in the circle of doing the same thing. We need to let go of the past. We cannot undo. Do you know you cannot undo the past? Do you know you can't go back in time and change it? If you could go back in time, you probably want to change a lot of things. So we need, we need to let go of the warped view we have of ourselves. It doesn't match the view that God has for us. We need to let go of the hurts that hold you so tightly. And some of you are sitting here in this room this morning, including myself, you were probably hurt. And we hold on to hurt. Hurt is not of God. He wants us to live in joy, peace, and happiness. We need to let go of the mistakes we once made. Everybody makes mistakes. But we can either stay in our mistake or we can move past our mistakes. We need to let go of the anger that's consuming us. Anger. You need to let it go. It doesn't make you look good. You're always frowning. Always cross. Always moody. Always having a go at people. You're so upset with everything around you and everybody around you that you lost your joy, you lost your peace, you lost your confidence, you lost your love. Your, our children cannot even talk to us. Our wives are so scared to say anything to us because we're just so angry. We're just carrying so much of bitterness and so much of hurt. I want you to, I want you to say to yourself, let it go. Let it go. I know you're thinking about Elsa and Anna, no? Let it go. Let offenses go. When you're offended, it's hard for you to worship God. We're sitting in offense. Something that happened two years ago, it's still offending us. And when we offended, we played this record in our mind over and over and over and over again. And then we begin to think things that never really happened. Because we're so offended. We sit in offense in church and we can't worship God. We, we offended with our brother and sister in the house of God for months now. We need to let it go. Because an offended heart cannot receive from God. An offended heart cannot worship God. An offended heart cannot receive the blessing of God. Offense. Everything is just offends you. If we're in that place, we need to let it go because it's holding us down. Let it go. Others have moved on. You are still holding on to offense. Oh, they don't care. Look around. They don't care about me. They moved on. You're still holding offense. An offense is like cancer. It's like a disease. It affects every part of your body. Offense. Offended over little things. Oh, you didn't greet me today. You greeted that person next to you. you didn't greet me. They didn't talk to me. They didn't come visit me. Six months gone now, they didn't visit me. Why you didn't visit them? I don't know. Why, did, why you didn't visit them? They don't visit you. Communication is a two-way street. Last time I checked. We sit offended. We sit in offense. And the enemy loves to see us sitting in offense. Offended with the house of God. Offended with the leaders of the church. Offended. Just getting offended. And then when we're around, we have to walk on eggshells. Uh, um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Because we don't know whether you're going to get offended. And offended is a spirit of the enemy. Wants to cause discord in your families. Wants to cause, cause discord in the house of God. Offense. We, a, a person that cannot be corrected is a person that's off easily offended. Say to yourself, ouch. <laughs> there are people who can walk away from you. And hear me when I tell you this. When people can walk away from you, let them walk. Don't try to talk another person into staying with you, loving you, calling you, caring about you, coming to see you, staying attached to you. I mean, at some point or the other, you've got to drop the phone. 
You've got to let it go. Don't try to talk to another person to stay with you or loving you. Because these people are not attached to you. When people walk away from you, let them walk. Because our destiny is never tied to anybody that left. 1 John 2 verse 19 says, in the NIV, they went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. So it's okay to let them go. People leave you because they are not joined to you. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about friends and family. If they are not joined to you, you cannot make them stay. Let them go and don't, it doesn't mean that they are bad people. They're not bad people. They're not bad people at all. It just means that part in your story, in your journey is over. And you've got to know when people's part in your story is over so that you don't keep on raising the dead. Stop begging people to stay. Let them go. Say, let it go. We want to hold on to past relationships and we want to hold on to people. When their journey and their story in your life is over, you still have the relationship. But my destiny is not in you. If you are holding on to something that doesn't belong to you and was never intended for your life, you need to let it go. If you are holding on to past hurts and pains, let it go. We're holding on to past pains and hurts five years ago, three years ago. And you know what? Whenever we get together, we talk about the same thing. Remember how they hurt us. Remember how they did this. I don't need to remember those things because God has a better future for me. I can't be stuck in the wilderness. I can't be going back to Egypt all the time. I need to go to the promised land. Amen? Whenever we get together, it's the same conversation around the, around the table. No, we need to move past that and let it go. If someone can't teach you right or love you back and see your worth, ladies, let it go. Even guys, let it go. If you're holding on to some thoughts of evil and revenge, you need to let it go. If you're involved in a wrong relationship or addiction, you need to let it go. If you're holding on to a job that no, more or no longer meets your needs or talents, you need to let it go. I love this one. If you have a bad attitude, Let it go. Attitude and offense go together. You need to let it go. Turn to somebody and say, if you have attitude right now, if you had attitude with me this morning, you need to let it go. If they don't want to say anything to you, turn to the person behind you. Maybe that person is offended already. Wow. If you're struggling with healing of a broken relationship, you need to let it go. It's been two years since you broke up. Let it go. God has many more fish in the sea for you. You can pick, choose, and refuse. But because we are so attached to people and want it to work, but God is saying, I don't want you to be with that person. Let it go. If you are trying to help someone who won't even try to help themselves, let it go. If you're feeling depressed and stressed, let it go. How many of you are feeling depressed or stressed right now? Everything just stresses us out. We need to live life. Smile. We're thinking. Our, our brains never stop thinking. Let go of the past. Forget the former things. I've got some breaking news to you, for you this morning. The battle belongs to the Lord. I said the battle belongs to the Lord. We can't fight this battle on our own. It belongs to Jesus. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. If we cannot let things go or the it go, let it go, whatever the it is in your life, it will hold you in bondage. You will be carrying that bondage and that burden for life. The enemy wants us to live bound by these things. He wants us to think that we, are, we lost the battle, but 
I want, I want you to know this morning that you are more than victorious. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says, It shall come to pass in that day that this burden will be taken away from your shoulder and this yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. The anointing breaks every yoke of bondage. Come on, it's the anointing. The yoke is holding you. All the it's, whatever you're going through, it's holding you in captivity, in bondage. But I've got news for you this morning. The anointing of God is upon your life. The anointing is there to break every yoke of bondage. The struggles we cannot let go are unbroken yokes in our life. And we experience different types of yokes. It's a spiritual bondage. It limits, controls, and holds our progress. And it puts us in captivity. A yoke is a spiritual difficulty that places limitations and progress in life. An anointing in the Old Testament was once reserved for kings, priests, and prophets. In the New Testament, the anointing is the Holy Spirit given to us through Jesus. It's the anointing. That breaks it. Say break. Take your hand and do this. Break it. It's the anointing. All the it's in our lives that holds us. It's like a yoke attached to our neck. It's suffocating us. It's causing us to have headaches and depression and stress and anxiety and health issues. We need to let it go because the anointing only breaks it. We need to be set freed from it. Delivered from it. Too, too long we're holding on, just like Israel, holding on to it. You know what happens to us? We come to church. I'm going to walk down. Yeah? We come to church on a Sunday morning. And we, we're like, hi, how are you? Good. We're like, oh, Father, thank you this morning. Oh, Pastor Ash, what a word. Oh, Pastor Mel, really spoke into my heart, man. Yo, what a challenging word to me. Yo, praise the Lord. I feel so good. I feel so good. And, and when an altar call is called, we, 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 come with our, we come with all our burdens and all our heaviness. And we, and we come and we bring it before the altar. And we lay it there. And we get all emotional. Oh, thank you. Oh, what a word. Oh, they played that song. It was my favorite song. Oh, powerful, powerful. I cried. I actually cried. Yeah, I cried, I cried. And when, when the meeting is over, we say, thank you, Lord, and then we... We, we walk out. We walk out with the same thing we brought to the altar. Does that make sense? We take it. We're leaving it. But then we're taking it with us. Let it go. Let it go. Because we're so used to holding on to it, when it's not there, we feel like, hey, why do I feel so light? <laughs> Something's missing. Something's not there. Amen? The woman at the, at the well, and here we go again, speaking about the woman at the well, she left her water pot. She came with it. Every day, she came with the water pot to full water. But she left it there. We need to leave our water pots in front of Jesus and we need to walk away. Because the Bible says in Psalms 34 verse 8, Oh, taste mm, and see that the Lord is good. Man. Mm, you know when I'm having a bunny chow? Mm, it's tasty. It's oh, taste and see. Oh, when I'm having my waffle, oh, it's tasty. I love it. But put something bitter in your mouth. How does it make you feel? Oh, cringy. We need to let it go. Leave our burdens at the altar. Don't take the same thing back into the car with us. And then our conversation changes. Hey, I feel so tired. Huh? Hey, I don't, know, I don't know what's going to happen when I go home. But in the presence of the Lord, we are, it's emotional. It's not genuine. We need to let it go. And we need to live like we are loved by Jesus. Are you loved by the Lord this morning? How many of you believe that you are God's favorite? Only some of them believe. How many of you believe that you are God's favorite? You're the apple of his eye. Amen? Whatever has happened to you, whatever you've done, whoever hurt or abandoned you, 
whatever has been said to you in hate, anger, or abuse, that does not define who you are. It doesn't define your worth. You're the son and daughter of the Most High God. Come on, you're the son and the daughter of the Most High God. We need to act like we are the children of God. There's no thing or no one that can stop God's love from you. Do you know that? Nobody can stop Jesus from loving you. No matter what your response is to love, you cannot change the love of Jesus. He loves you unconditionally. Many of us come to him with a truckload of open wounds and scars and pain, shame and guilt. And we easily forget how much he loves us. Tell somebody next to you, Jesus loves you. We let our past mistakes and shame or the deep wounds or what has happened to us take priority over our thoughts. Many times our worst enemy is ourselves. We are our worst enemy. We, we are the ones that set the tone in our lives. We replay destructive messages and thoughts over and over in our head, telling us that we don't deserve to be forgiven or we aren't good enough to please God. If this is you right now, let it go. And you need to say, Lord Jesus, I will listen only to your truth about me. And in the name of Jesus, I command all lies from Satan about myself and my feelings or self-hate and anxiety to be sent right back from where it came from. And that is the pit of hell. Amen? The love Jesus has for us is the basis of us. Our, of the relationship he wants to build with us, which is an intimate, personal, one-on-one -on -one love that he desires to have with us. What is an intimate love? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, God, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God created you and in, and in his own image, which is a testament of the value that he placed in you. You have value. Tell somebody next to you, you are valuable. If you're next to your wife, say, honey, you are so valuable. If it's not your wife, please don't say anything to them. <laughs> Whew. It's good to laugh in the house of the Lord. God created you in his own image. Think about it. He took his time. He just never said, let there be Stanton. Or let there be Adam. He took his time. He constructed each and every one of us with different gifts and abilities and talents. Everybody is graced differently in the house of the Lord. And sometimes we forget the anointing that God has placed upon us, the giftings and the callings that he has for us, because we're stuck in a place of torment. We haven't let it go. We're sitting with abilities and talents and ministry in the house of God. But because of offense and anger, we are not doing nothing because of hurt. Psalms 139, from 13 to 14, verse 13 to 14 says, For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and you are wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. We are his unique creation. Made to bring pleasure and glory and because we are so loved by him. I can stand here this morning. And we can declare boldly that you are a child of God. You are forgiven. You are saved by faith. You are sanctified. You are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. You are strong and powerful. You can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. You are a heir of God and joint heir with him. Amen? You are blessed going in and you are blessed coming out. By his stripes you are healed. You're above and not beneath. You have the kingdom. You have the keys of the kingdom. That whatever you bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Say, I have keys. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith. What we trust in God for is by faith. We don't physically have it right now. But by faith tomorrow we will have it. How many of you agree with that? It's just a few of us. Nudge somebody and say to you, tomorrow we're going to have the building. And if they don't believe you, nudge them even hard and say, brother, tomorrow we're going to have the building. Because we walk by faith. 
I walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. So let's stop mourning the past. And let the past go. Say, let it go. You know, one of the hardest things for me to do, and my family will bear testament to it, okay, because we still go through it, but for me personally, but one of the hardest things for me to do was to let go what happened to us as when my father passed away. I had to let it go. Because I'm never going to get it back. I, I had to let it go because it was tormenting me. It was the thoughts, the pain. I was telling Melissa the other day, I don't know why, every time when it comes to this time of the year, I, I get that smell in that hospital. And I had to break it, that, that, that thing. I had to break it. Every year around this time, I would get that smell. It was a very ugly smell. It was a, it was a very nasty smell. And I would get it and I would tell her, I'm not feeling right today. I, I feel something's wrong. I can get this thing. And I had to break it. I had to let it go. Because that thing that I once experienced, I had to release it because it was, it was still, I was still carrying it around. And it was the most difficult thing to go. I had to sit on my bed and I had to say, Dad, I need to let you go. I don't forget. We never forget. But I, in order for me to move on and what God has in store for me, I had to let go. Some of us need to let it go. Let it go because it's holding our minds and our hearts in captivity. Amen? So let's stop mourning the past. And let, it, and, and let the past go and embrace the new things that God has in store for us. Leave the past behind. And let's live life. Let's live life. Let's live your life like you are loved by God. Let's live our life that we can make memories with our families and our friends and our kids. Let's smile again. Let's laugh again. Let's do things that we've never done before. Because the person sitting next to you might not be here forever. They might be gone next week. Because death is certain. Death is certain. Enjoy life. Smile again. You probably came into the house of the Lord this morning very burdened, very challenged. You're holding on to things. We need to let it go. Say as loud as you can, let it go. Let's leave whatever we're carrying here today. This is heavy. Yo, in the spirit, spiritual, it's, it's heavy. It's weight. Because it's so heavy, I can't hear the voice of God. I don't have a prayer life. It's, it's, it's the weight. I'm, I'm having faith, but there's something pulling me down. It's the weight of worry. It's, it, it's, it's the weight of shame and guilt. But when I leave it, I feel better. I feel light. So in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. Amen.